Hello and welcome to another Orange Coast College Mathematics video. In this video, we're going to be solving exponential equations, which is equations that have exponential expressions in them. Now, there's two sorts of exponential equations we're going to look at. One where you have both sides of the equation can be written with the same base. And that means basically you'll have, you can rewrite both sides of the equation to be b to some expression and then b to some other expression. So like this expression might be x, this might be y. But in that case, if you have b to the x equals b to the y, if this base is the same and you raise it to these powers and get the same number, right? These two expressions are equal. That means the exponents have to be equal. So if you can write each side of the equation with an, as an exponential expression with the same base, that just means you just set the exponents equal. Now, if you can't do that, right, there's no way to do that, then what you want to do is usually in these problems, you're going to have like one or two exponential expressions. You want to isolate the exponential expression, or if you have two of them, you want to have one on one side of the equation and one on the other side. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a logarithm of both sides. I'm going to assume for this video that you're kind of comfortable with logarithms because we're going to need them as well as exponent rules. And then finally, you're going to apply the power property of logarithms to solve for x. So basically, once you have logarithms, that should help you cancel out one of the exponential expressions and then use the power property of logarithms, which just to remind ourselves, what is that? That is if you have, say, log base b of x to the r power, you can write that as r times log base b of x. We can use this to help us simplify these logarithms and solve for whatever our variable is. OK, example one. So we have 9 to the x equals 27 to the 2x minus 3 power. Now, when you see this, the way that makes this a lot easier to solve it is by recognizing that both 9 and 27 are powers of 3. So in fact, uh, 9 is 3 squared. So this becomes 3 squared to the x power. And 27 is 3 cubed. So this becomes 3 cubed to the 2x minus three. And then we apply properties of exponents. So this becomes three to the two x power. And this is gonna become three to the three times two x minus three power. And now we have the same base, right? Three and three. Since three to this power of two x equals three to the power of three times two x minus three, that means that the exponents have to be the same. So what this gives us then is we must have that 2x equals 3 times 2x minus 3. And that's a linear equation in x. And so all we have to do is simplify and solve it. So we'll get 2x, we distribute, we'll get 6x minus 9. We can just add 9 to both sides. We can subtract 2x from both sides. That'll give us uh, 9 equals 4x. And we divide both sides by 4 to get x equals 9 over 4. OK, and that's it. Example 2. Now, this is, again, another problem where we can write each side with the same base. And the reason why is, right, 8 is 2 cubed. So 1 8 would be 1 over 2 cubed. Right? Let me write it out here. 1 8 would be one over two cubed. And then you could rewrite that as two to the negative three. So the left-hand side of this equation just becomes two to the negative three power to the x. Four, of course, is two squared. So this becomes two squared to the x plus one. We can now simplify using exponent rules. This becomes two to the negative three x. This is going to be 2 times 2 to the 2 times x plus 1 power like that, OK? And now we have the same base. 2 to some power equals 2 to another power. So we set the exponents equal. And we get negative 3x equals 2x plus 2. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, OK? I'm going to get negative 5x equals 2. We divide both sides by negative 5 to get x is going to be negative 2 fifths. Example 3. Now, again, to do these problems, we need to have 
an exponential expression isolated on one side. Okay. So what I want to start by doing is I want to get this, this uh, three to the two X on one side of the equation by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one from both sides. And then that will give us two times three to the two X equals 14. And then I can divide both sides by two. And that will give me uh, three to the two X equals seven. Now, here we have two exponential expressions. I mean, you don't think of seven as being an exponential expression, but it's seven to the one, so it is. But there's no way to write three and seven with the same base here. So what we can do is we can take a logarithm of both sides. Now, you can take a logarithm of either three or seven. You could take a natural log or a log base 10, whatever you want to do. I'm going to take log base three of both sides. So we take log base three of both sides. And what that does is it's going to cancel out, right? Log base three of three to some power, right? You can take using the power rule for logarithms. You can move this logarithm, sorry, it's exponential as a multiplier. Log base three of three then becomes one. So the left hand side simplifies into just two X. And now you have log base three of seven. And so the thing about log base three of seven is it's a number. You could use your calculator to find it, sort of. But now step up, and that's the thing to do is just to solve for X, just divide both sides by two. And we get X is log base three of seven over two. Now log base three of seven, unless you have a nice calculator, like a, a fancy one, graphing calculator, it probably doesn't have the ability to do that. So we can use a change of base formula and we can write this really as like one half. So instead of dividing by two, just one half. Log base, say 10 of seven divided by log base 10 of three. And e any scientific calculator should be able to do that. That's using the change of base formula, uh, which we're not gonna talk about in this video. All right, example four. So we have log, we have a, a base of four and a base of three. There's no way to write these as, as the same base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take log base three of both sides. You could take log base four of both sides, but it doesn't matter that much. So I get log base three of four to the X plus two equals log base three of three to the two X minus one. And now you can use the power property. We're going to just make these exponents multipliers. Okay. So what happens here is we get, I'm going to continue doing this over here, is we get X plus two times log base three or four, which is just some number um, at the end of the problem. I wouldn't calculate it until the end of the problem. And then over here, you're going to get two X minus one times log base three of three. But since the base, three will match the base of the exponent, it's gonna cancel out and just give us one when we take log base three of three. And now this is just a linear equation in X because this is just a number, okay? Again, you could use your calculator to find it using the change of base formula, or if you have a graphing calculator, you could just probably get it directly, but I wouldn't do it until the end of the problem. So we have to just solve this the way we would any other linear uh, equation. We gotta distribute, so we get X times log base three of four plus two times log base three of four equals two X minus one. And since now this is a linear equation in X, I need to move all of the terms with an X to one side, all the terms without an X to their side. So I'm gonna add one to both sides of the equation. And I'm gonna subtract X times log base three of four from both sides. So what you get is on the left-hand side, you get one plus two log base three of four. On the right-hand side, you're gonna get two X minus X log base three of four. And now from the right-hand side, since both terms have a, a factor of X, you can factor out the X. You get X times two minus log base three of four. The left-hand side is the same. Okay, and the final step is you can just divide both sides by the coefficient of X. So just divide both sides by this.
And that will give us our solution, which is x equals 1 plus 2 log base 3 of 4 divided by 2 minus log base 3 of 4. And again, log base 3 of 4 is a number. At the end of the problem, if you need a specific, if you need an approximation, like a decimal approximation, you can plug it in at the end and figure it out. Here's our final example. This is a little bit different from the other two because this is what's called a quadratic in form uh, equation. And you may not realize that when you look at this, you could think of e to the 2x using properties of exponents. That's really just the same thing as writing e to the x squared minus e to the x minus 6. So what you have is you have this, this unknown quantity, e to the x, right? And you have that quantity squared minus 1 times that quantity minus 6. That is essentially a quadratic equation because if I were to say, okay, let's make a new variable, let's call it z, let's let z be e to the x, okay? Then this would just become z squared minus z minus 6 equals 0. And that's a quadratic equation. Um, in fact, this one can factor. It's going to be z uh, minus 3 times z plus 2 equals zero. And so according to the zero product property, right, you have z minus three times z plus two equals zero. It's a product of two numbers equals zero. One of them has to be zero. So you get z minus three equals zero. Or z plus two equals zero. So z can be positive three. Or z can be negative two. Now, z is e to the x. So this gives us two equations, e to the x equals 3 or e to the x equals negative 2. Now, let's talk about this one on the right for a moment. e to the x can never be equal to negative 2. So remember, e is e is Euler's number. It's like 2.7 something. It's positive. No matter what exponent I raise it to, it will never be equal to neg a negative number. So this is actually not a possibility. That's, that's impossible. So we have to have e to the x equals 3. And now I can take the natural log of both sides and then using the, the power rule, right? The natural log of E is just one. So on the left-hand side, I just get X equals natural log of three. And that's our only solution. And that's it for solving exponential equations. Again, there are many sort of properties involving exponents, involving logarithms, and mastery of those will make these problems easier. So um, if you're having trouble with these, my suggestion would be to go back to your exponential rules, go back to your logarithm rules, and, and practice some of those problems, and then come back, okay? Because these sorts of problems can be difficult because they require mastery of those other skills. So again, my suggestion is, is if you're having trouble with this, go back to those, those rules type problems. All right, until next time, have fun.